the policies and priorities meeting of January 20, 2014 um, in session. And are there any other items? We do have one, Madam Chair. We'd uh, like to talk about the replacement of one of the uh, uh, apparatus at the fire hall. <coughs> Priorities Committee agenda as amended um, over January 20th, 2014. Thank you. Any comments? Uh, all favor? Unanimous. Carried. Thank you. And then, oh, sorry, may I have a motion for the adoption of the minutes on pages 2 through 7? Councillor Walsh? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the minutes of November 18th, 2013. All the priorities. Thank you. Any comments? Hearing none, call to the vote. All in favor? Unanimous. Carried. Thank you very much. Onward to number five, a business arising from the minutes. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. I would like to note uh, from the uh, business rising from the previous minutes, uh, November 18th, where it was noted that uh, I would speak to the Central Alberta Mayors and Reeves in December with regards uh, to um, the discussion that Council as a whole had with reptiles in the past year of 2013. Uh, there were no topics discussed at that particular meeting at that time as there was a lot of new mayors and leagues in the room and we spent uh, time just uh, trying to get to know each other so I will once again bring that to a future agenda and report back at that time. Thank you very much. Any other business arising from this? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Item 6, page 8, 6A. Welcome for the presentation of disaster service. For sure, we've got uh, Bill Johnson with us today, and uh, Bill's going to give us a high-level overview of our uh, emergency management procedure, and particularly uh, how council fits into that. So, Bill, you want to come up and use the microphone, please? Thank you. Better get my notes here. What I want to do is is first of all talk about what is an emergency, and that's very brief. Then I want to talk about why we're even discussing about emergencies, about council's responsibilities and authority, and about my responsibilities and authorities. And I wish this would be a very exciting presentation, but unfortunately it's not. When we're talking about responsibilities and authorities, it all comes from statutes, so I'm going to bore you with a whole bunch of statutes. Uh, for a few minutes and uh, I know that some of you have heard this more than once uh, hope it's a good reminder to you some of you will be new and uh, I hope you'll find it interesting so first of all what's emergency it's an event that requires prompt coordination special action or a regulation of person's property to protect the safety, health, or welfare of people or to limit damage of property. 
and that then leads us into what are the priorities for emergency planning. Our number one priority is always to protect <coughs> lives, life safety. Our number two priority and number three priority change based on the incident that it's either to protect property or protect the environment and they can change from two to three. But always the first priority is life safety to protect people and make sure that they're safe. So how sorry, why are we even talking about emergency management with council? And that comes from the Emergency Management Act section 11 and it says a local authority shall not may shall at all times be responsible for the direction and control of local authorities emergency response unless the government and the government being the province assumes direction and control of, under section 18 of, of the act I've been involved in emergency management or disaster services for I believe some 30 years and I used to be able to say without a doubt that the province had never ever taken control of an emergency in the history of the province and that changed last year. The province assumed control of the response in High River and that's the first time in the history of the province that they've taken control. It also goes on to say that council shall prepare and approve emergency plans and programs and that you may enter into an agreement or make payments or grants or both to persons or organizations for the provision of services in the development or implementation of the plans or programs. So how does it, the emergency response uh, emergency framework work first of all the family individuals are responsible for the first 72 hours and they're responsible for their safety from that point on it goes to first responders and normally it's the fire department that's first on the scene so they are responsible after that point it expands to the town and that's where I become involved if I if we need help we go to the province and if the province needs assistance it then goes to the government of Canada and it goes in that order the town of Olds does not have the authority to go to the government of Canada it has to go through the province so what are council's problem powers because you have the responsibility of dealing with all the incidents in your municipality section 551 of the municipal government act in a sense says that whatever happens in the municipality is your responsibility so if an incident occurs within the municipality you're responsible and there's two exceptions which are two sec other sections of the act which deal with contraventions of the MJ and eliminating uh, dangers <coughs> it goes on to say that this applies whether or not the emergency involves a contravention of the act or a bylaw so you're still responsible no matter what and any person who receives an order under this section to provide labor services equipment or materials must comply with that order and we'll talk more about that when we get into state of local emergency the act was clarified uh, sometime recently to say that even though they have to provide the labor the act now says you must pay and it didn't say that until recently 
Section 5 says that if you have to pay and if somebody's called the cause the incident, you can charge them for your cost. And that's also something new that's been added to the Act. <coughs> if you remember in um, Municipal Government Act, it says the municipality can only make expenditure that is included in your budget, either operating or capital. It goes on to paragraph B, which says you can make an expenditure for an emergency. So if, even if it's not included in your budget, if it's an emergency, you have the authority to spend money. I might add that the pictures, if you can see them, that I've included in here are things that have included, have occurred in, within the area or central region. Council's responsibilities on the Emergency Management Act, you shall appoint emergency management committee, which is a committee of council to advise on the development of emergency plans and programs. You also must appoint an emergency management agency to act as your agent in ex exercising your powers and duties under the Act. So the Municipal Government Act and the Emergency Once you make that state or declaration of the state of local emergency, there are uh, a number of specific and special powers planned so that in the event of an incident, most municipalities don't have, if it's a long incident, we don't have enough people to keep going. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's never boring to hear about emergency planning. So thank you so very much, and I am, um, along with council, happy that we have a regional system, regional system to rely upon, um, and it does give us depth. So thank you. And are there questions? I think Councillor Bergeron. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. I just wanted to ask uh, a few questions about your uh, about your role. Um, how long have you been? You, you mentioned thirty some years, but how long have you been doing the emergency? Emergency services here in Old. So. I came here in 2000 and started shortly after I came here, so almost 13 years. Is it is it a, a volunteer position in, in communities, or is it a paid position? Or? It's a paid position. I get paid by the hour. Okay. Good. So if I work, I get paid. If I don't, you don't pay. Me. Good. I was worried that maybe you're volunteering. So. Um, do you look? Um, is it a difficult? Uh, position to fill like you in I know you well you've been doing it for 13 years I guess but what sort of a succession plan when you decide one day you're not uh, you're tired of doing emergency and emergency management what would you what would we look to is that the town that appoints somebody or they open it up to uh, volunteers can I defer to Lauren because I work for Lauren is that okay I wasn't sure how it works um, I guess the, under the description of what I do, the director of emergency management is one of them. Uh, however, the time restrictions back in the day, it only made sense to uh, contract out the work to bill. So uh, this is before, back a CAO ago, uh, we put this in place and it's worked very well. Um, in fact, so well that Sundry has hired Bill to do the same job. So hopefully we don't have something at the same time, but if we did, we have it covered. Uh, when, I don't know if Bill's ever gonna retire, but uh, at some point when that happens, uh, we'll review it uh, then, but uh, again, until that time, we'll have to just, uh, we'll get it covered, don't worry about that though. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna, okay, thank you. Councillor Harper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Johnston, in reference to the regional plan. Where is the communication piece? I know that you have an actual organizational structure for that, but where's the communication piece in that? 
Uh, our organizational structure is based on the incident command system, which was developed in the U.S. and is widely, almost exclusively used now for managing disasters. And communications is part of that. It's in the operation section and it reports directly to me. So any communications go out through me. Okay, so j just another question in reference to communication. And I did have the privilege of taking one of the emergency management courses uh, here a few years ago. So I, I certainly do understand the role of counsel when an emergency is declared or you're the boss. We're just there to pay the bills, correct? Yes. But um, where is the other part of the communication piece with counsel? You make the, the decisions and relay them to counsel at the time just to give counsel the heads up or the mayor the heads up, say expect a bill for $100,000 for upper truck or whatever the case may be. Is that how that sort of communication way, takes place? The way I have structured it is that the CAO attends all of the debriefings in all of the, the meetings in the EOC, and it's the CAO's responsibility to keep counsel informed of what is occurring, and that's his only responsibility. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Councillor Wolf? Yeah, just to follow up on what Councillor Harper said about courses. Do you anticipate having a course put on for for elected officials? I know. Very helpful when I was first on council. We have some new councillors here. There are that course is delivered at times within the area, and if council is interested, we can certainly arrange to have that course. We have trainers in the district on a regular basis. in October as a group uh, the weekend after the, uh, the election um, we did say that we'd like to get more uh, bylaws and policies on the policy uh, procedure agenda um, we did have to defer uh, at, at one a meeting already but uh, these were the and uh, uh, Deb Godfrey has got a, a sort of a strategy to bring forward um, policies uh, on the 12th uh, uh, meetings per year. So the ones that uh, are on the agenda today are uh, sort of organizational pieces and uh, deal directly with council. So uh, I hope that uh, you've had a chance to have a look at them and uh, we'll entertain any questions. Sort of what we hope to do with this process is uh, bring policies forward, um, have a process to sort of go through them and uh, see if they still fit the bill, if they need some uh, tweaking or whether they're not relevant anymore. No, so the first one is the uh, procedure of conduct uh, for council meetings or um, procedural bylaw. So it's on the agenda and I uh, uh, just want to go through it and see if it still uh, meets our objectives or whether there needs to be changes. Okay, questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, so my understanding is that uh, through reading this, there has not been any updates or recommendations to this date. This is the first kick of the cat. All right. Um, in section, uh, my pages are all mixed up now, 14. Okay, so section, uh, well, it's not a section. Okay, let's do the page 12, page 12. Page 12, number 9, where it states, as a rule, the chair does not make any motion, but shall be able to voice what he or she sees as a useful motion and seeks some. We're rolling now. Bill, if I can ask you to uh, uh, say your name, spell it, and then the, uh, your official position. I'm Bill Johnston, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N, and I'm Director of Emergency Management for the Town of Wolds. Okay, thanks. 
Okay, you, you talked about uh, emergency preparedness uh, and, and what was a disaster. Here in Olds, what kind of real disasters uh, could we be facing? Well, I think one of the big things that, that comes to mind is the railway goes right through, through Olds and uh, lots of businesses back on to, to the railway. The other big one is Highway 27 goes through Olds and uh, although there's less uh, truck traffic going through there now, there still is a lot of truck traffic and some of the goods that they're carrying are, are not nice goods. In, in, in a, a quick synopsis, what, what involvement or what responsibility does the town have in uh, such disasters? In the event anything happens in the town, the town is responsible to deal with that incident. So if a train derails, we don't have to deal with putting the train back on the track, but we have to deal with anything that comes out of, of that incident. So if some uh, chemical is released, we deal with, with that part of it. The same way with the, on trucks. Uh, if an accident and something is released, then we deal with the release. So, in, in terms of uh, what can the citizens of Olds do to prepare for any kind of disasters uh, themselves? If uh, if they would go on to the internet and look at shelter in place, and if they would prepare themselves to be able to to shelter in place in the event of a a release of a toxic gas, uh, that would help. Um, they can also go on uh, getprepared.ca and develop a 72-hour kit. So put all the things that are listed on that website into a kit so that in the event of an incident, they can look after themselves for 72 hours. Great. Anything else you want to add? To no, I don't think so. Um, 28, that would be page 28 of your agenda. Thank you so much. Um, so just B and C, just a little bit of clarification on that. Thank you. Um, so 2B, um, we don't necessarily have anything in bylaw. Um, so the what the MGA says is that if you are uh, appointed to a committee or an external body, uh, if there is nothing to so sort of support or supplement what the MGA says, the rules under the MGA for your conduct as a council member carries over to your conduct and expectations at the committee level. And um, I don't believe we've got anything that sort of um, um, augments or restricts that. So uh, what that says to me is uh, the expectations that you have a, as a member of council you carry to your uh, commitments uh, to committees and authorities. Uh, point C, I think is, uh, it has a lot to do with the discussion that we, we've we had around uh, the expectations when you go to uh, outside bodies and um, do you go there as a uh, representative of the people of Olds by virtue of your election to Olds Council or are you there for other reasons and when you come back uh, are you do you come back as an advocate of those external bodies um, or are you uh, do you play a role of just being a conduit between council and those other bodies? So, uh, reading to be now, and uh, the um, I guess the value of bringing these things forward on a periodic basis is uh, we can talk about the subtleties and the interpretations that we all may have, and make sure that there's clarity on these things. And to be uh, is uh, it, it's rather open to interpretation. Walsh? Yeah, I guess my suggestion is that 
committees that we're on may or may not be a, a committee of council or, or, or so supported by council. Some of them have their own acts that they follow, some of them. So this one, you kind of got to take this little, I don't want to say grain of salt, but I ain't going to say grain of salt. You know, the committee do not exceed the authority of the committee granted by council. Sometimes council's not granting authority to these committees. So, you know, we, we have to be, able to be flexible with this one. But I, I think the intent of what it says there, I have no problem with leaving it the way it is. It's just knowing that some committees are, are, have different authorities granted to them from the acts provided by the provincial legislation or, or contribution disclosure act. So uh, this one really is uh, the CEO, the office of the CEO that's responsible to keep this policy up to date and it is up to date at this point in time. There, there was some, uh, not so long ago, there was some real um, confusion around um, the, the election finance and contribution disclosure act. So it, I'm glad that uh, uh, the provincial government certainly has been pushing all local government to make sure that they're aware of what this act is. And, uh, and I think our members of council are well aware of what, what it is. Um, a point of order, Madam Chair, I believe we need a motion to um, to have RCAO bring these recommendations back to the regular council meeting for approval. Yes, we do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I so make. Thank you so make. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll uh, call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's carried. Thank you. Meeting at 7 o'clock. So, do I need a motion for that? No. no. Okay. And next, we'll be going on to item 16, pages 33 through 79, Public Interest Disclosure Act, or PETA. Thank you, Madam Chair. This one is interesting because it's uh, um, it's an opportunity that we're not obligated to take uh, advantage of. Um, but we've had some internal discussions and uh, I don't see any um, any reason why the Town of Olds would not um, advise the Minister that we would like to be part of uh, this registry. Uh, so uh, if you've uh, all read the, uh, the documentation, you'll see in the last paragraph of uh, the letter from uh, the Associate Minister that uh, municipalities are not uh, entities that do fall under this, but uh, we can voluntarily opt in. And I think it's it's a good idea for us to opt in. I don't think there's any downside um, to it, and I think it, uh, it increases um, transparency, and uh, I think that that's uh, a major goal of, of the Town of Wolves in this council. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Uh, through the chair there, CAO, is there any examples you can give me? I'm trying to visualize what some what a scenario would be in this case. No, we would just be on the, the registry and we would be bound to follow um, the tenets of the act. So we'll bring that back and uh, you know more fully explain uh, what our obligations are as a signatory onto this registry. Uh, but we wanted to put it on the PMP agenda first of all, just to make sure that uh, we're comfortable opting into this. And we'll bring back a full request for decision uh, at a council meeting, uh, spelling out what the obligations are. Thank you, then I'd so move that we uh, recommend our CAO uh, direct this back to our we go council meeting, the Public Interest Disclosure Act. Thank you. Any comments, questions? So the real intent is really to uh, protect whistleblowers and uh, make it a safe environment where um, 
you know, if there's something that requires clarity or there's some uncomfortableness with uh, our practices and processes that, uh, you know, people feel empowered to, to bring it forward without uh, fear of, um, you know, of bringing things forward. So again, I, uh, um, I don't have any problems with this. I think it's a, it's a good move and um, I hope that we don't end up dealing with a bunch of frivolous things, but I don't get the, uh, the I don't think that that's where this will lead to. Councillor Durian. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I see the other side of this, I think I see the other side of this, and that is that it also helps to prevent wrongdoing from somebody who's not doing that which is wrong. In other words, <laughs> um, if, if, if somebody has a vendetta uh, against somebody else and thinks they have a way to injure that person um, somehow, some way, and I'm not talking physically, then I, I think this, this also helps to protect the person who uh, may be on the other side of the, of the ball. Not somebody who's doing something wrong, but and that was my uh, when I went to that. Thank you. Essentially, I mean, this is this is sort of driven by by trying to make control costs to all of the utility customers. Um, that's sort of where the where the, we're going, uh, along with uh, the transfer to you know, the taxes. Would be a letter sent out to the landlord <coughs> immediately as, as soon as it's transferred, notifying them that the transfer has been done. Um, once the, the outstanding utility account has been transferred to taxes, it can, it can still be paid at any time. There's, there's no problem uh, with it being paid. It doesn't have to wait until the tax due date at the, the end of June or anything like that. It can still be paid at any time. Um, along with the, the changes that would have to be uh, advertising program. No, we had to have a cost overrun, and it did end up at about $175,000. So council gave administration to go ahead to divert or to divert from funds from MSI approved projects last year to uh, complete the uh, the payment of the uh, the construction. So we did that, uh, and in the 2014 budget, which has been approved, uh, MSI has been um, uh, earmarked for the replacement of the rescue unit. The unit is about a $430,000 apparatus. It's a 50-50 cost share uh, between the town of Oles and Mountain View County. Mountain View County has dedicated uh, their 50% of the funds, and we do have our 50% of the funds in our 2014 capital budget at MSI. But before we pulled the trigger on this, we did want to come back and have the discussion with council. Um, there was some discussion. Uh, when we did move funds from other projects last year to uh, fund the, and we t actually took the money from MSI for that truck uh, to complete the build of the new fire hall, um, and we put it back in again this year uh, with new funding from MSI, and we just wanted to have a discussion around that before we go ahead and, uh, and um, start the process of buying that unit. Now, one of the mitigating circumstances is uh, we did get a, uh, a price on that unit last year. They're holding that price, uh, but as the Canadian dollar continues to fall, uh, the price of the, the actual price of that unit continues to go up. So um, if they're holding the price now, uh, they're not gonna hold it for forever. And if uh, the, the difference in the price right now is about $15,000. Is that including the U.S. exchange, the 15000 or is that plus? That is the U.S. exchange. Uh, the difference between uh, the price they're holding for us now, uh, when the, the dollar was at 92 or whatever it was, and uh, where the dollar is right now. Thank you. Questions? Uh, Councillor Overwater. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, um, just a clarification. Um, when you say the town of Olds puts in 50% and the county puts in 50%, do we put in the 50% the because it's housed here? Um, does this, um, it's a truck, correct? Does it not go to all the county of Mountain View? I'm just kind of wondering why the split would be us solely 50 and then everybody else is 50. Do you see what I mean on that question? Um, with the county, we have a fire protection agreement with them. Um, many of the vehicles, the apparatus are cost shared 50 50, 70 30. The county actually provides 100% funding on items like the tenders and the bush buggies. The 50 50 funding, the truck is basically, it's only used in our area. Um, and the way that use works out, it's about half in the country, half in the county, half in the, the, the urban area here. Uh, they have different agreements with Sundry and and stuff like that. The only time this truck would leave our area is we had a mutual aid request for it. Um, so that's how the 50-50 the funding came about for that truck. So further to that, each of the urban municipalities that provide service to the county under agreement, they all have various units in their, uh, in their cadre of uh, apparatus. And we benefit from some of those units uh, when we call for mutual aid as well. They are going to eat the fifteen thousand, which is nice. But we move on this thing. That's why I brought it to Norm. And uh, for every penny, we it's about five thousand. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't take long to add up. That's all. Thank you. Any further comments, questions? Okay. Sorry. Councilor What was the date? Out of curiosity, that they were going to hold the price. For? It really doesn't make any difference. If it was the MSI funding. But I'm curious. If something we need to decide on uh, next today well we can't decide anything today can we sure. uh, no it's a pretty budget item that it's brought to the table oh i see okay. 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 the date so there's no motion involved at all no we just want to if there was some uh, if we need to you know delay it we oh i see that's all i have no problem makes sense to save some <clears throat> I did have uh, one question from, uh, I believe it may have been our chairman, or before the meeting, I just, uh, uh, you know, how do we determine uh, when we change out apparatus? And, uh, you know, we do have a 20 year plan for all of our equipment, and uh, we do have two members of council that sit on our fire committee, and, uh, and I think the process is um, where it needs to be. So uh, I thought I'd just answer that question as well. Um, very much so. The truck that we're currently running was only ever going to be 15 years, and it's kind of gone past that now. <coughs> but, uh, this truck that we're getting is we anticipate having for 20 years. We're making, they're making, we're making decisions that are going to give us extended life to the right. maximum. And so, <coughs> further, other communities follow the same procedure when they're looking for Yes, many communities do, but then there are some communities that just sort of get by with what they can patch up and drive down the road. Who was first? Mayor <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Thank you. My question would be when you're state um, you're making decisions based on twenty years. Um, so what you're telling me is that your state saying uh, population, whether it goes to the highway or not, and you get extra calls, um, that's all inclusive? Because that's where it here. Absolutely, the particular style of truck that we chose will we'll handle the, the tribal end down the road and that. Uh, 
how the next truck is purchased, the cost sharing. 20 years from now, we'll have to see what's, you know, where it's, where it's gone and where it's been. Councilor Harper? Um, also, just as a, mem a former member of the prior committee, that uh, this council has to realize that Mountain View County is receiving capital requests from not just souls but all of the communities, and that the 20 year plan helps Mount Hugh County plan as well because for the town of Olds, 50% of one truck is $200,000, but Mount Hugh County is looking at five other areas as well. So that's why the 20 year plan is very beneficial for Mount View County as well as yourself. Thank you, any further? Is there, so, information yes yeah, so uh, when what we follow when we do capital purchases is we follow our, um, our purchasing policy so there's various thresholds in that policy uh, so notwithstanding when things are approved in the budget um, depending on where the, the threshold lies uh, so if it's over I, I can't remember what it is it's fifty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars council has to make that decision so uh, we will inform our purchasers that we'll have a, uh, an RFD coming to council on the 27th. Thank you. Councillor Yes, um, thank you, Your Chair. I'd just like to make a comment. Um, reading the um, AUMA uh, news, there was uh, an article in there regarding um, emergency um, response uh, funding to communities that do go out to the highway so I'm not sure where that really is at AMA but is that something that we would be um, able to uh, participate with yeah we, we are following that and uh, we certainly uh, have a, a good process to make sure that uh, the money that uh, uh, we do deserve as we respond to uh, provincial highways uh, are tracked and collected. Anything else to add on that? Uh, if there's a penny to be made out there, I'll get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've been collecting from Alberta Transportation to us for quite three years now. It's standard policy across the province. Currently what's going on with AUMA and with the Rural Association is that uh, the Fire Chiefs Association presented a uh, resolution from our board uh, to petition the transportation to increase the rates. So that's what you're seeing is the same policy, but we're wanting to update the, the amount that they're paying uh, per hour. So I, I think that's uh, what I understand what the UNA is debating at this time is are we requesting a big enough change? Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Okay. Thank you. sure of the maintenance schedule itself so I would have to get back to council on that but it's with regards to the specific issue of snow load on our roofs both Peter and Kelly have been up uh, checking the roofs of all of our facilities uh, they have pulled the blueprints on some of the ones that they have questions about and in particular the arena and the curling rink and they have those blueprints um, and also the information the town has had snow load on there, but they've contacted uh, an engineer to uh, interpret for them how practically they can go up operationally and judge you know, what the snow load on, a, on the specs, how does that equate to what they're looking at. Uh, but they have been up there keeping an eye on it. They were uh, surprised at actually how, how little snow there was up on top of the arena roof itself, surprisingly. And the other, the other rooms that we have, um, like the pool, et cetera, were also checked out. You know, they're slope roofs. And some of them carry down onto the, onto the flat roof. Um, what about the library? I know it's flat. And they've been on the library as well, yes. Yeah. So they've checked, checked all the roofs. Um, and 
The other thing with regards to this most recent one, we have been in contact with the arena here. They actually had a couple of inquiries this morning uh, for ice. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have much ice available. Um, right now, Patty at the rink is in, in the slots that they'd be looking for, the same slots that, that minor hockey and figure skating uses. Um, that we have rentals, but she has directed them to Torrington and specifically is working with any inquiries that come in where we do have a fits to see if they match what they need. So on the, we'll go back just at the very front part. I will get back to council and bring you what, what sort of uh, maintenance schedule we have on the roofs. Thank you very much. Comments, questions? That's your Walsh motion to adjourn. All in favor? That's scary. Olds Community TV, your go-to channel for news and information in Olds, Alberta.